Hello and welcome, my name is Tommy and today I'm recording this video on the iPhone 10 so I apologize if the quality isn't super great and I also apologize if the audio isn't super great. Anyways, on the left here, I'm gonna be comparing the iPad Pro 11 inch to the iPad 9.7 inch Gen 6. This is also gonna work as a comparison to the Gen 7 as the Gen 7 is practically the same exact tablet as the Gen 6 except it's got a slightly nicer screen that's slightly, I don't know if it's got a nicer screen but it's got a slightly bigger screen and the Touch ID module might have been upgraded to the newer version. I'm not 100% sure because I didn't do the research for that before the video. Anyways, if you like this video, make sure to give it a like. If you didn't like this video, give a dislike. And if you've been following me content for a while, please do subscribe. I do enjoy doing reviews like this. And the more you can like my video or share it, the more I'm able to bring more videos like this to you. Anyways. Without further ado, let's dive in. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the physical aspects of these. So what is the biggest difference? On both of these, I have the folio case on there. On the left, it's going to not cover the back side, and it's only going to, the magnet is only on that side. The magnets inside of this for stability also aren't as good. I'll show you that in a second, where with the iPad Pro, it actually covers the whole entire thing because the iPad Pro actually has magnets all around here to help it and it goes to the front and the magnets on this are a lot nicer, it's a lot more sturdy. So let's go show you that really quick. As you can see, when I put this one up, I can actually kind of put it up like that. You can see me in the reflection and then where over here, it doesn't stay up as you can see, it just kind of flops down and it's not as sturdy. It's one of those that it's far more sturdy on the iPad Pro than it is for this one. It also just keeps your device a little bit nicer. The common theme through this whole entire video is going to be this costs exceptionally more than this. Let's actually look at the physical sides of this. If you actually look at this, it's got a rounded corner right here, which makes this so much more comfortable to hold in the hand, where for the iPad Pro, it's going to be square, which is not as comfortable in the hand, which is unfortunate. Also, they are practically the same exact size if you actually line them up here, and if I can actually get that all in the frame. As you can see, I apologize, My, if I had the newer iPhone, I could actually zoom out, but I don't. It's going to be pretty much the same exact size for both of these, This will, the iPad Pro just being a little bit bigger, and then obviously due to the screen, you're getting a lot bigger of a screen. The next thing that I wanna talk about is when both of these displays are off, you can tell the difference immediately with the screen as this one shows a little bit gray where this one does not. This also only has the face ID where this one does not. I am a much bigger fan of the face ID over the uh, touch ID, especially because this is running the iPhone 6S or something like that's touch ID, which is very slow, very out of date. It's one of those that when I press on it, it takes me a long time usually for it to register my fingerprint, and I've never had problems with that in the past. I know some people have difficulty with fingerprint sensors. I've never been one of those people, so just something to keep in mind. Once you go to the face ID, it's really hard to go back to touch ID just because it's so much slower. It's not as convenient. With the Face ID, you pretty much just forget that your phone or your lap tablet is even locked because all you do is you swipe up and it just automatically unlocks for you. The next thing that I wanna talk about is actual speeds of these guys. So we're gonna go into Safari. We're gonna go over to Apple's website. We are going to tap iPad. We're gonna go over to the iPad Pro. And the one thing that I want to show is just how smooth this thing is. My uh, Also, don't keep in mind that because this is recorded on my phone, the colors are might look better on one or the other, but this is not a good video representation of the colors or the display because this is at 30 hertz, 2 or 30 frames per second for this video. This is 120. It's just so much smoother to go back and forth where when you're trying to do that with the iPad, it lags a little bit more and it's just not nearly as smooth due to the increased processor here and the 120 hertz display over the 60. So if we go over into the buy, you can tell that the iPad Pro is ridiculously expensive, coming in at a base price of $800, and that's for a 64 gigabyte version too. You can tell that Apple is seriously, seriously showing their greed here of why are we not getting 128 gigabytes, especially now that the iPhone 11 is out, 
how, how is this not stock 128 gigabytes? Like, come on, Apple. Just please, please stop being so greedy. Anyways, moving on. One thing that I do really like about Apple's website is that you can actually go back into the iPad place. You can click compare and you can compare all of their different products right next to each other to see is it really worth the upgrade or not. So we're going to click the 11 inch iPad Pro. We're going to go down to the sixth generation and the sixth generation. You can also do this if you want to. You can actually look at the comparison of the iPad sixth generation with the newest generation. Like I said, specs are pretty much going to be the same. Moving on, the iPad Pro comes in two colors, the silver and space gray, whereas the iPad 6 comes with silver, space gray, and gold. This is going to be an 11 inch. This is going to be 9.7 inches. This also comes with the liquid retina display, the ProMotion technology, which is the 120 hertz, and True Tone, which is going to make uh, the white balance a lot nicer. This also, as we've talked about, Face ID versus Touch ID. The A12X Bionic is also way, way faster than the A10. Pretty much this is a, your mobile processor. It's going to struggle to do a lot of really demanding things, but it'll be able to do most things. This guy is actually faster than a lot of laptops that are on the market right now. It is incredibly fast, it's incredibly snappy. And if they upgrade the iPad, which they probably will do here pretty soon, just like this had a slight upgrade, they'll probably do that with the iPad Pro as well. And in that sense, it's probably gonna be the A13, which is gonna be even faster. This comes with two things of storage, obviously big difference between one terabyte and 128. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then the compatibility with the Apple Pencil second generation and first. The first generation only works on this. The first generation does not work on this. The second generation only works on this, does not work on this. Also, the second generation is a lot nicer. Here's the actual second generation. It looks a lot nicer, it feels a lot nicer, it writes a lot nicer, it's a lot faster. It also connects to the side of the iPad and then tells you the battery and charges inductively through that with a magnet where the um, first generation, you actually plug it in by pulling off a little thing and you can break it and it's just not as nice. So it's one of those that the Apple Pencil is a lot more nicer, but common theme, this is stupid expensive, ridiculous, unbelievably expensive and $130, where the Apple first generation is $99, which is also disgustingly expensive as well for what you get because you're still very limited. But this isn't a video about the pencil. I'm just telling you, pencil's a lot nicer on the Pro than it is that. So if you're trying to take notes or you're an artist, this is the one that you're gonna go with. If you're not and you're just a normal student or you're going to take notes occasionally, then the first generation should be okay. But if you've got some extra income or you're only going to use this as your laptop and media device, then I'd almost suggest going to the Pro model instead. You're going to get slightly nicer um, compatible keyboards and stuff like that for the Pro than you are for the 9.7 inch. But these are going to be cheaper than these. Once again, are you seeing the theme? USB-C compared to Lightning. Lightning is not as good of a connector in the sense of speed. And so you're going to come with a 12 watt charger here that's going to charge your iPad compared to the 18 watt USB-C. That means that this is going to charge a little faster than this guy, I do believe. And then also with this guy, you get fast charging, full fast charging for your phone as long as you buy a USB-C to Lightning adapter where this guy's gonna come with your 12 watt. It's not gonna be as fast, but it's gonna be faster than your five watt. So something to keep in mind, bonus for this guy, if you spend a little bit more money, always spending more money, thanks Apple. And then also, this is nicer. If you have a lot of lightning connectors and accessories, this'll be a little bit better than this guy because this guy, you need to buy all new stuff. However, everything I think is going to USB-C. So this is more future-proof than this, as I would imagine iPhones next year in 2020 will have the USB-C connector instead of the lightning, or at least we can hope. Moving on to capacity, this comes in 64, 256, 512, and one terabyte, where this comes in 32 and 128. This is $329 compared to 700 or $800. Obviously, dramatically different, and then the 128, I don't know how much it costs, but they both come in Wi-Fi and cellular. For the size and weight, if you're interested, you can pause the video and look at this. All I'm gonna tell you right now is they're pretty much exactly the same uh across the board you're going to notice very very little differences like i said this one's more comfortable due to the curved display where this one's square it's a little it's just a little sharper and not as comfortable 
Moving on to the display, this is where you're gonna see a huge difference comparing both of these. Can't see it on this camera. The one thing you can see, this is a little bit warmer where this is a little bit cooler. This has the liquid retina display. This has the retina display. It's gonna be 11 inch compared to 9.7 inch, but both of those technologies for the LED are pretty much the same. This one's gonna have slightly better resolution than this, but you're not really gonna notice that one. But where you do start to notice things is this is gonna be, a, the iPad Pro gets a lot brighter where this doesn't get nearly as bright. So if you're using your iPad out in the sun or in bright areas, this is gonna do a lot better than this guy. Also, they have, on the Pro, has the fully laminated display, anti-reflective coating, ProMotion technology, which is the 120 hertz converted to 60. It also supports white color display, P3, compared to full standard RGB, and then true tone display. So what all that means is the display is closer to the display on here, so it looks a lot nicer. It has better contrast, and it has better colors here, where this has less contrast, not as bright, not as good of colors, and you can't change if you want warm, cool, or neutral on the iPad where you can for the Pro through the True Tone display. The idea behind that is whenever, say you're in a bright area, like when you're changing environments, your white point changes on your screen. With the True Tone, it's supposed to keep the white point always the same no matter what environment you're in. You don't get that for this one. So it's one of those that you're trading there. And then the P3 compared to full sRGB, don't quote me on this, but pretty much the difference is 8-bit panel, 10-bit panel, 16.7 million colors, 67 million colors. So it's just one of those, a lot more accurate, better contrast, not as accurate, not as good of contrast is the simple way of saying it. I don't know if this is a 10-bit panel or if this is an 8-bit panel, I'd have to do more research on that. But I'm just telling you, with the P3, you get a lot more colors that are more accurate than you do with the standard RGB. So, but you also have to be consuming content that allows that and there's a lot of limited content that doesn't do the full color gambit on either one of these due to iOS being a little bit limited. I already talked about the A12 chip is just significantly faster than the A10. Um, you notice it in, depending on what you're doing. There's a lot of things that this iPad does almost the same speed as this depending on the apps or what you're doing with it, but there's a lot of times where you can really tell a difference between this being a lot faster. Battery life is gonna be pretty much the same on them. The pencil is gonna be different. This one does come with a specific smart keyboard folio, which is a little bit nicer, that makes it a little more of a laptop. They did add um, mouse support now as well for both of these guys with the iPad OS. The camera on this is going to be a lot better than the camera on this as well, on both the front and the back. I think this one comes with the same camera that I'm using currently to record this video on the iPhone X, where this one comes with a lot of an older camera. Now, it's weird to use your iPad to record stuff, in my opinion, but hey, some people might wanna do that. The biggest thing is if you're a student and you're wanting to take pictures of, or you're a business professional, you're wanting to take pictures to put into your note program and then sign with the Apple Pencil or something like that, it's gonna be better on the iPad just because it's got a nicer camera where you're not gonna get as nice of pictures on the iPad itself. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're a business professional or you're a student that's gonna be taking a lot of pictures of documents or signing a lot of documents and then sending them electronically, the iPad Pro is gonna be a little nicer than the iPad is for that. Video recording is also going to be a lot nicer on the iPad Pro, obviously just because it's got a nicer camera, as you can see, the uh, 4K compared to 1080, better 1080 at 240 FPS, 720, 120. Like I said, a lot better on the iPad Pro front camera, same exact thing. But the biggest difference here too is that the iPad Pro is giving you all the things that the new iPhone X, iPhone XS, and the iPhone 11 and Pro are giving you with the new stuff of the True Depth camera, the seven megapixel photos, the portrait mode, portrait lighting, and emoji, blah, 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 blah. You can read all that. Just a lot nicer uh, in that sense, what you're paying for. When we come to the speakers, this comes with four speakers, this comes with two. That is dramatic as well. We'll go into a YouTube video here in a minute that you can hear the sound for that. Not that it's gonna be great with this recording. Just let me know. This is a lot louder and a lot clearer than this guy is. The Face ID is a lot faster and compared to the Touch ID. You can still purchase and do everything with your Face ID as you can with the Touch ID. 
they come with the same Apple Pay, same Siri, same cellular and wireless, except this comes with Bluetooth 5.0 compared to 4.2. You're not going to notice a huge difference. The 5 is going to uh, connect a little faster, have a little bit better battery life, and a little bit better range compared to the 4.2, but it's not huge. This is also going to give you the gigabyte class, so 1,000 megabytes compared to 300 megabytes if you buy the... Uh, version that has cell phone enabled or you can just use your tablet your phone as a hotspot and it works as well USB-C and then all the pretty much the same thing so there's a lot of similarities but the biggest thing is that this has just slightly better everything it's slightly faster it's got slightly better screen it's got slightly better cameras it's got 120 hertz compared to 60 hertz by better brightness not as good a brightness like i said it's pretty much almost all exactly the same so i wouldn't worry too much about it let's go to youtube really quick just to test out the difference there as you can see the pro loading just so much faster And we'll go into this. Hello and, and welcome. My, my dog and I are going to be reviewing the Razer So this is going to be Max. So without further ado, let's dive in. Is It's got the Razer 5G Advanced Optical Sensor with true 16,000 DPI. What that means is that it's 450 inches per second IPS. So there is the biggest difference. Also, when you're closing out a program to do the 120 hertz, this just feels a lot smoother. In general, everything feels smoother on this. But outside of that, you're pretty much getting the same thing. So going into the conclusion, the iPad is going to allow you to do pretty much 99% of the things that you wanna do, especially if you're a patient person because sometimes that processor is a little bit slow, but you're also saving a significant amount of money. And with that 99% of things that you wanna do on this, with it for the price, this is a great bang for your buck. If you're a professional, that's the only time or you're really hardcore wanting to replace your laptop and you have a lot of money, then I recommend this. This is probably going to cost you about a thousand bucks by the time you buy all the peripherals and everything that you need to get up and running with this, where this one's gonna cost you about 450 bucks to get everything you want for that. So as you can see, just dramatic difference, especially when you compare the, the biggest thing of this is gonna be a little faster, a little brighter, little has nicer cameras and it's going to have the 120 hertz compared to not going to be able if you're taking a lot of notes as a student this one's nicer just because the apple pencil is a lot nicer on this device than the first gen for this device but you can still do the same exact things and if you're an artist i would definitely recommend the this the pro model over the older model but that depends on your budget as well so like i said it's going to be personal preference of how much are you really wanting to do if you're wanting to completely replace almost a almost everything that you do with the Pro, then I recommend getting the Pro. If you're only gonna use this to sometimes watch movies or read an article or read a book, then I definitely recommend this to almost everybody and only this for the small amount of people. Anyways, if you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a dislike. And of course, if you've been following my content for a while, please do subscribe. God bless, and I will see you on the next one.